So I'll be comparing the media players and just some of the standard apps that come with both phones. So I will open up the iPod and for the Galaxy S I'll open up Double Twist. And you can tell there's a slight delay with um, Double Twist, it's a third party app. I like it over the standard app that comes with Samsung Galaxy S. Again, there's just some just some lag when it's opening up, but like once it's open it's it's nice. So just to give you a little taste of the interface of all the mus the both of the music players. iPhone you just have your standard icons on the bottom that you can navigate through. Here you're in like an icon form for a double twist. But I like how I have a music widget and on the iPhone I, I can't really have one because there's no widgets for iPhone. Alright, so now I'll show you the calendar. I have a calendar app over here on the Samsung Galaxy S. Go to see if I can navigate to the calendar. Go to month. And this is the calendar view for the Samsung Galaxy S. You can even go in landscape mode. It's pretty cool. And the calendar for the iPhone 4. So you can't go into gal into landscape mode say I want to add an event here all I have to do is tap and enter the information as for iPhone 4 you have to add the add button or you have to tap the add button then type in your title just the interface Okay, so I'll be demoing the web browsing experience of both phones. On the Samsung Galaxy S, we have this is the wallpaper and I got it from. We have the Dolphin HD browser, <clears throat> which in my opinion is better than the stock Android web browser that comes with the phone. So let's just go to and gadget. Pull up that web page. Go to Engadget on here. Wonder why it's taking long time. There we go. So right now we're in the mobile site, but let's just do a quick speed test on the full Engadget experience. Say one, oops, alright, one, two, three. <clears throat> Let's see which one loads up first. You notice that on the Samsung Galaxy S it's zoomed in and on iPhone 4 they have it desktop. So iPhone 4 first. But I really like the Samsung Galaxy S's screen. It's really something with that Super AMOLED. And it's done. Alright. How about let's try again and just refresh it. So one, two, three. Looks like Samsung Galaxy S is in the lead a little bit. Oh, iPhone 4 is done. 
Galaxy S is done. So we zoom out, check out the scrolling speeds. Samsung Galaxy S is pretty fast, and the iPhone 4 has that sort of like moving through, not like mud, but it's a little slower. Let's test out pinch to zoom. And on, in the video, the iPhone 4 screen looks a little yellow. Tell you the truth, compared to the Samsung Galaxy S, it is a little yellow. I really like the colors on this phone a lot better than I do on the iPhone 4. So this is iPhone 4's pinch to zoom. Samsung Galaxy S's pinch to zoom. They're both pretty smooth, same time. And if we zoom up all the way... Uh, where is that? Motorola's Droid X. So the iPhone 4 is, little zoom, is zoomed up a little closer, but you can tell it's just not as smooth really. Oh, this camera stinks, but the iPhone 4 has like a, it's like spec wise it does have better resolution, but I can tell that you, can, you can't see any di differentiation in pixels. Well, you can slightly on the Samsung Galaxy S, but in truth, no one's really going to look at their, like, the web page up that close. I mean, someone has to be blind or almost blind in order to have to do that. So speaking of display, I'll be testing, or I'll, not testing, but I'll be comparing the viewing angles of these phones and just overall the screen quality so let's go to settings Oops. and just crank up the brightness let's turn it all the way up and the brightness on both of these phones are all the way up So let's check out the viewing angles of the phone. So on the Samsung Galaxy S, there's a lot of glare. Um, on my hand, I mean, like from here onto the phone, not on the phone itself. It's the viewing angle of the Samsung Galaxy S. On the iPhone 4, it's the viewing angle. You can see the iPhone 4 is slightly better. But again, it, being practical, no one's really going to be looking at their phone at this kind of angle. It's only like, it's getting like nitty gritty. But you can see that the viewing angle of the iPhone 4 is better though. See that? So we have iPhone's Retina display versus the Super AMOLED Galaxy S. I really like the Super AMOLED um, better than the Retina display, but I would like the Retina display's resolution on Samsung Galaxy S. So the Galaxy S doesn't, um, the Retina display still has quite a bit more pixels per inch. Has a higher pixel density than the Samsung Galaxy S. So I'm going to turn the brightness back down for both these phones and I'm going to get on to some speed tests. Let's turn that up. Okay, so both these phones should have speedtest.net. Okay, but first, just to be fair, um, let's go and kill all the tasks so I have a widget for that in my Samsung Galaxy S and on my iPhone I have a couple of options I have multitasking over here that should be in the jailbroken versus rooted part but 
double click here and just exit out of everything and even go to some of word settings make sure everything is closed it's kind of a hassle because everything keeps on opening up again and alright kill all I usually get more memory on this thing but it's usually a, around 160 megabytes but and same with the iPhone 4 I usually get 300 but you notice a memory difference there's 137 on Samsung Galaxy S and there is 287 on the iPhone 4 but let's get on with the speed test so again go to speedtest.net okay so first we're going to do it at the same time, they're both connected to the same Wi-Fi network. And ready, set, <clears throat> go. Looks, <clears throat> looks like the Galaxy S is trumping the iPhone. And then now we're going to do one separately. So just Samsung Galaxy S alone. So it looks like they're like stealing each other's Wi-Fi. It's a lot faster this time. Alright. See they're clocking at the speed. Look at the other results. Overall, this is the one that we just did before the last test. Alright, let's go back to that. And for the iPhone 4, let's test again. Let's see, get a better look. And yes, I'm holding it at the spot of no return. And let's take a look at the results. These are the average results of the iPhone 4. These are the average results of Samsung Galaxy S. Disregard the last two, I was in a different Wi-Fi network. These are just the results. You notice right off the bat again, the iPhone 4 screen is just a bit yellow. And on the Samsung Galaxy S, it's as white as snow. Alright, so both app or both phones have their own notification system. For Samsung Galaxy S, it has Android Android's notification bar where you just pull down here. And it shows you all your notifications. You also have um, some quick toggles for the GPS. If you want your phone on vibrate. Or even Bluetooth. And then you just swap back up. So for the iPhone 4, you have pop-up notifications, which can be a bit annoying. But they work. So in terms of having a stock iPhone versus the like a stock Samsung Galaxy S. I think notification definitely wins for the Samsung Galaxy S and I would like the notification system on the iPhone 4 to be changed just because notifications, the pop-ups reminds you of like pop-ups and you're browsing the web and you're like, oh, this is annoying. But anyways, it works. Both of them work, but Samsung or the Android one works better. But I'll see you guys in the next video review or the next part of the review so I can show you uh, more features of the two phones and I'll catch you guys later